So I looked um, at parodies on YouTube and how they actually work. And there's no law in the UK actually um, allowing you to make um, parodies. But there is one in France and other countries that allows you to make it under the grounds that it's either criticism, criticism of the work and um, public disclosure. But there's no law in the UK that allows you to do that. But there are other laws that you can use. Um, no, no, yeah, for the, in the Designs and Patent Act, there is a, like, you can use it for its substantial use. Um, you can use criticism for more review or public interest defence, but these don't really stand up as well in court, so it can leave you still get to be by open to be sued by the owner. Let's go to the next one. <coughs> um, the YouTube, though, has like an odd thing going on where people don't really get um, sued very often for uploading parodies. It's because large YouTubers are usually like partners with a label who will like, put, like, invest money into the record companies so they can have rights to use the songs in parodies and with, like normal covers. And then the money that it's like, taken from advertising on the songs before will then go back paying that the costs to create um, a partnership with the labels and the record companies so they get away with it and are allowed to do it. Whereas independent YouTubers, they just get away with it because there's so many like um, parodies on YouTube that people don't sit and troll through them or try and find them. And the way YouTube finds out if it's breaking copyright laws, it's a computer system that scans the WAV file against another one to see if it actually um, matches. And because the lyrics have changed or the music might have slightly changed, they don't match up to the lights of the radar. Although, um, there is like a kind of gap where if you're independent and you're not like to do with the YouTube label, if your video goes viral, you can give, when you like, get public attention, then you can get in trouble for it. Like, there was the Newport State of Mind, which is a cover of, well, a parody of Empire State of Mind by Alicia Keys and Jay-Z. And in two weeks, it got two million views, which, like, fell in the public eye. And EMI, like, asked for them to have it removed on grounds of infringement of copyright. So, again, because it was just some woman who'd done it, in a house, she couldn't afford to like, take the amount of court and challenge it. Yeah. Anyway. You have to be a bit quick. <coughs> So, um, what that breaks down to afterwards, um, after party, is pastiche. Um, so, down the copyright law um, in the American Bill of Amendments and stuff. Um, it was to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive right to their expect respective writings and discoveries. So when we break it down in terms of party and pastiche, it adds value. Um, party adds its own cultural value and has been received by an audience and then regurgitated back out again, um, using perhaps some of the same material, sampling it. Um, but usually party is the rehash of the song and um, it has been changed by excerpts of lyrics, bits and melodies. Um, Woody Guthrie said, Words are the important thing. Don't worry about the tunes. Take a tune. Sing high when they sing low. Sing fast when they sing slow. You've got a new tune. Um, basically, he's converting the idea of what a cover is. But um, through folk tradition, there have been a series of pastiches from Led Zeppelin, um, <coughs> Jews and reconverting them. Um, but the fact that they have put their own style on it sort of allows them to sort of um, flood the rooms a bit. Um, so, copyright and the problem, sort of coping with copying. Um, there's various rules that you have to stick to if you're going to try and get away with a pastiche or a copyright. Oh no! What happened? Go back. Hello. Go screen. Please. Ah. Okay. So, um, for a pastiche to be an original work, you have to take away so much of the original artist's um, what do you call it? intentions with the track. So, if you change the lyrics, you change um, what the song means, if you change the melody, you keep the lyrics, you can, um, in effect, 
create a theme song and still have it as your own work. So, um, broken down and um, first wave from the. Uh, um, I can't remember the name of this. But, um, and broken down in the. How party law works is that um, it has to be non commercial, so if you're going to make a party or a pastiche, um, you, have, you can't sell it. That's basically it. Um, it can't have an adverse effect on the market for the original, so it, such as the James Blunt one, it could have been defamatory towards his name and things like that, and um, has taken down. Um, must not use more of the original than necessary. So things like sampling, um, if you can take it out, um, Weird Al records all of the tracks to his parties over again, so he has control over the recording. Well, the original recording is down to his um, record label. Um, must add some significant new creation so it doesn't stay with the original. Um, must have humorous or critical intention, um, which is the biggest part of it. Um, a lot of people um, get away with just sticking to that, um, really bad covers of songs that have some sort of joke in the middle of it. Um, but yeah, for to get away with it, you're going to have to stay within those rules there. Um, so here's a couple of examples. There's some references as well for the really good people. And, um, other stuff. So, um, another point is educational purposes. Is once you use a pastiche, um, it's sort of a recreation of a person's work. Um, the criteria of it is how um, it has to be a mimicry of a person's work, but is done in such a way that it's educational. How it was learned, how it was recorded, things like that. So, I have a. Um, Recording of horrible histories, doing a pastiche of Eminem. We can find this. Oh no! No. Guess we say. You put it back on me. What it was? What did he say? Maybe it's the audio. Oh dear. So we've got this third part, which is clearly anyone who's listened to my name is will recognise this part of the start. My name is my name is my name is Charles the Second. Okay, so the fact that it's used for educational purposes takes a whole lot of graft out of it. Um, we'll compare that to the original. Oh no, go away! I don't like. Oh, it's just super zoomed in. Don't worry, guys. We've got this on the wraps. You're going to have to finish pretty um, immediately. So I'll leave that. Here's another one. Um, anyone remember this? Playing. <laughs> Don't do that. Do this. Um, the techno heads, I want to be a hippie and I want to get stung. Um, from 1995, off their fantastic album. Is it head sex? Um, but. Not only is it used um, work by... Uh, I do indeed. And the Smurfs used it as well as many other things for their own album, Smurfs with Pop, which is a full of covers and pastiches. Um, this one's called um, I Have a Little Puppy. So the music has been recreated. The themes have been recreated. But the fact that they have the national with that it's Smurfs properly, um, their lyrics, all that um, allows them to take control of that recording and so on. Um, there we go, there's numerous other sources I want to get into, but that's all I could do for that. Um, and the last one is this picture of Maria. There you go. <laughs> That's terrifying. Okay? Any questions? Lovely, thank you, well done.